just for a moment. Forget about the rules and regulations you're supposed to follow while operating a forklift. Forget about the financial impact that a hazardous operator can have in the workplace. And let's break it down into one simple truth. For any operator, safe driving habits are simply a matter of life and limb. It's being able to enjoy the things we take for granted and enrich our lives that an incident could affect, or worse, end altogether. Is it worth it? If the thought of getting killed or seriously injured at work is not bad enough, imagine being responsible for the death or injury of a coworker. That's something you'll have to live with the rest of your life. It's going fishing, hitting the links, playing with your kids. Operating any type of forklift requires special skills and training in order to limit damage and injury producing incidents. From your pre-shift inspection until you shut down and park your forklift, there's a wide variety of hazards you may come across that require immediate recognition and response. A pre-shift inspection of any forklift is necessary before it is put into use. This inspection not only helps to meet regulatory requirements, it reinforces the habit of consistently checking the various forklifts you may use during your workday and your career. Developing a safe routine is crucial. Forgetting any item of an inspection can increase the likelihood of an incident, and it is so easy to do. Something as routine as fastening your seatbelt can ultimately prove to be lethal if forgotten. Are you wearing the right personal protective equipment? Is the area clear and safe? Is the unit secure? Have you done all the necessary checks? All of these factors make up a proper pre-shift inspection and ensure the safety of yourself and others in your workplace. Always inspect a load before lifting. If the load appears unstable or too heavy, do not attempt to lift it. Approach the load squarely, with the mast at the same angle as the load. Keep in mind that some loads may not sit level in a rack or on the floor. You will have to adjust the mast to suit the load position. This will allow the forks to enter under the load without getting caught or snagged. Whenever possible, drive the forks all the way in under the load until it makes contact with the load face of the forks, making sure the load is properly centered on both forks. At the very least, the fork should support two-thirds of the load. This is not as easy as it sounds, or as easy as a good operator can make it look. If the forks are longer than the load, they will protrude out the other side of it when driven in all the way, which may cause damage to other products or structures. In this case, drive the forks under the load as far as safely possible, lift the load until it just clears the supporting surface, back up far enough to give you enough room to lower and re-engage the load fully. Remember, the best place to carry the load is right back at the heel of the fork. You should also be aware that a load's weight may not be distributed evenly, making one end of the load heavier than the other. If this happens, you may have to adjust the positioning of your forklift, or readjust parts of the load itself before engaging it. A consistently high level of awareness is one of the greatest assets that a good forklift operator can have. You have to constantly pay attention to your environment, because as you travel through the plant, things are constantly changing. Whether you are operating with a load or not, there are always hazards to be aware of. When dealing with pedestrians, always make sure to stop and make eye contact, then follow it up with an acknowledgement by waving them through. 
In any situation involving a pedestrian, the forklift operator should always give pedestrians the right of way. At blind corners, stop and sound the horn. Then, continue cautiously if it is clear. A key concept every operator should be familiar with when raising the mast is the stability pyramid. The concept is simple. Everything has a center of gravity, that is, a single point where it will balance in all directions. Your forklift center of gravity has to stay inside the lines of stability that make up the pyramid, otherwise it will tip over. When you pick up a load, the CG of the load and the CG of the forklift join together to form a combined center of gravity. The higher the load is lifted off the ground, the less area the combined center of gravity has to move around inside the pyramid, which causes stability to decrease. This means the higher you lift mast or load, the less stable your forklift becomes. The size, weight and position of the load, the motion of the forklift especially while turning, and the height of the mast will all affect the stability of your forklift. Once you have properly engaged the load, raise it upward smoothly. Be sure to tilt the load back just enough to secure it for travel. A slight backward tilt will increase the security of the load as you travel. Too much tilt is just as dangerous as no tilt at all. As you tilt back, remember that the CG is also moving back toward the rear of the triangular base of the pyramid where it has less area to move. Once again, stability is reduced. Limited vision is always a concern. Always proceed with caution when behind the wheel of a forklift. Safety first. If a load obscures your vision, travel in reverse while looking in the direction of travel, but take extra care when turning. Any turn could cause the load to become unstable. If you still can't see clearly while traveling, ask for the help of a coworker to act as spotter. And always remember the danger of tail swing created by the back end of the forklift as it swings out in the opposite direction while turning. Position the truck square to the loading point. Raise the forks to the correct height. Tilt the forks to a right angle to the load. Drive the forks into the pallet as far as safely possible. Raise the load 3 to 4 inches if you have clearance. Tilt back to secure the load, remembering that clearance may be limited. Stop and look behind you for pedestrian or vehicle traffic, debris, potholes, or anything else that may be in your way. If it's safe to do so, back straight up while watching the load. Stop far enough away from the rack or stack to safely lower the load to a safe traveling position. Never let someone pass underneath an elevated load, just as you should never assume that a coworker knows the right rules for working around a forklift. Before lifting or lowering a load, always be certain that there is enough clearance. And never elevate personnel unless you have an approved platform. And even then, only do so as a last resort. It's always best to raise people with equipment designed to do so. When placing the load on the floor, first maneuver the lift truck into position. Tilt the mast forward so the load is level with the ground. Lower the load until the forks are clear of the pallet. Then check behind you to make sure your path is clear before backing away. Do not drag the forks on the ground. In the case of stacking loads, Position the truck squarely in front of the deposit point. Make sure that the bottom load, or loads, are able to take the weight of the other loads to be stacked on top of them. Raise the load 3 to 6 inches above the support stack. Drive forward, stopping 3 to 4 inches prior to the deposit point. Tilt the mast forward until the bottom of the load is level with the support stack, and proceed slowly until the load is aligned squarely with the corners of the support stack. 
stop and lower the load until the forks are free. Then, check behind you before pulling straight back from the stack. Do not turn until you are a safe distance from the stack and the forks have been lowered to a safe traveling position. When entering trailers, always drive in squarely on a dock plate that is strong and secure. Before entering the trailer, make sure that the floor of the trailer looks strong enough to carry the weight of the forklift and its load, and that the trailer has been secured against movement by placing wheel chocks or engaging mechanical restraint devices such as dock locks. A support jack placed at the front and possibly the rear of the trailer may also be needed. Make sure that your forklift has enough clearance to enter the trailer and that the lighting and air quality inside are adequate. A forklift operator must not only be aware of what conditions can affect the safe operation of the equipment, but how the equipment affects the safety of the environment as well. As with any vehicle that burns fossil fuel, forklifts exhaust carbon monoxide, a chemical mixture that can kill, especially when working in an enclosed environment. If you feel faint, dizzy or nauseous at any time while operating, park the machine and get out for some fresh air until you feel better. It would also be helpful to inform your co-workers or a supervisor of the situation. Just like when picking up a palletized load, there is a proper procedure for placing a load in the pallet racking. Raise the load three to six inches above the height of the deposit point. Drive the load over the deposit point and stop three to four inches before the final deposit position. Tilt the load forward until it is level and lower the load square to the rack. When the forks are free, check behind you and back straight out. Travel only when you are a safe distance from the rack and the forks are lowered to a safe traveling position. When working in warehouse racking, a load could fall off the opposite side. To guard against this, rope off the aisles and have a spotter handy. When traveling on a grade, always keep the load uphill, whether you are traveling up or down the grade. Keep the load in contact with the load face of the forks and never turn while on any grade. Remember the stability pyramid. Turning sideways on a grade, or traveling with a load facing downhill, will cause the center of gravity to move into areas that will cause stability to decrease. While operating without a load on a grade, the rule is reversed. You should always travel with the forks facing down grade. This keeps the majority of the weight behind and upgrade of the drive and braking effort, and helps you to maintain better control of the forklift. Before shutdown, choose a safe place to park. A place that doesn't block access to doorways, exits, walkways, or emergency equipment. Bring the lift truck to a complete stop. Place all controls in neutral. Be sure to apply the parking brake. Lower the forks fully. Make sure that the steer wheels are straight so that the tail swing doesn't surprise the next operator to use the equipment. Stop the engine and turn off all accessories. Dismount the forklift using a three-point dismount. If the forklift must be left on an incline, make sure to block the wheels. If the truck will be left for an extended period of time indoors, close the propane valve and run the engine until all the fuel is used up in the line and the engine stalls before switching the key off. Electric powered forklift batteries should be placed on recharge as per the manufacturer's instructions in a well ventilated area. Electric powered forklifts exhaust hydrogen gas as they charge. Although hydrogen is not toxic like carbon monoxide, it is highly flammable. Always recharge forklift batteries in a well ventilated area. 
If you see debris or fluid on the floor, either stop the machine and clean it up or report it to a supervisor. Properly operating a forklift requires not only an understanding of the truck itself, but of the working environment as well. With so much to think about, to remember, and to put into practice, it's easy to forget something. Something simple, but something ultimately very important. But the most important thing to remember when on the job is what's important to you off the job.